So now this is the real reason why I gave up all plants. And this is my <laughs> beef with veganism, um, really, because there's a there's a thing that's missed out. It's science. So I can't argue with morals. Yeah, of course. Even though I did, look, I can prove to you, you've got canines. <laughs> I can prove to you, you should be, but they just go, I don't want to eat animals. Fine. But the bigger issue is that plants are trying to kill you. So I do it very quickly. Everything's trying to eat everything else on this planet, okay? And you've only got, you know, two options. You can either run away or you can defend yourself. That's it, okay? So for us as humans, it's quite clear. We can run away. We can attack as well. So we've got, you know, we haven't really got claws or teeth that will help us, but we're smart, so we use weapons. Or we can run away. Now, plants, they can't run away. So what they do is they make chemical weapons and they don't want to be eaten. Now, some plants, which you well know, you'll eat and they'll kill you. Other plants, an awful lot of them, you'll eat and they'll make you poorly. You know, I mean, just go outside and on the grass verge by the side of the road. There's a whole load of plants growing. There's ragwort, there's common plantains. There's all sorts of stuff out there. Why don't you go and eat them? We don't go and eat them because you, you, number one is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you have no knowledge about those plants. So even if it was in your history from your ancestors, that's been forgotten. So you might be able to eat them, but they might need a process in order to make them edible. And if you just ate them like that, they'd make you very ill. Because the plants are producing things because they've invested in their leaves and their flowers. They want to survive. They don't want anything to eat them. You know, I wouldn't advise eating the ragwort under any conditions because that's the one that horse people pull up because if the horses eat it, it kills them. And you can find it just along the roads. Um, but people have this concept somehow that plants are our friends and, you know, they're just nice and passive and you just go and eat them. It's not true. All right, potatoes and uh, tomatoes are members of the nightshade family. Deadly nightshade. They're the same members of the deadly nightshade family. So thousands of years of inbreeding and cultivating these things have led them away from their original root where they would have been a lot more toxic. So you can eat a potato now, but the potato's still got toxins in it. And so for many of us, those toxins, when they get in you, will cause inflammation. Extreme versions being the snake that swallowed the egg type look oh my god you know it doesn't mean it's this guy that we're talking about theoretically is allergic to wheat necessarily he might just like a big pile of mashed potatoes but the toxins in that potato are causing his body his microbiome his metabolism inflammation now all plants produce that even when you look at their case of wheat if you take a grain of wheat and you compare it to a grass seed the same family, there's just like, you know, 8,000 years of inbreeding between the two things because wheat is just a grass that we've cultivated, have nice fat grains, so it gives us a better yield of, of uh, flour so we can feed everybody. It's the same grass, wheat. Now, in the grass, there's a tiny, tiny bit of toxin because it doesn't want to be eaten. It's not really an issue for us might not even have been for our ancestors when they were making these rough grain kind of concoctions. But as we've increased by inbreeding the size of that grain, we now also in increase the size of that toxin. That's so in that are grain. you not getting those toxins though by eating meat and the, the cows eating the meat? No, the cows don't. The cows are not poisonous. They don't produce poison so that, you know. No, no, not, I mean, as in they eat the grass and that goes into the cow, then you eat the cow, you know. There's, there's that argument that people say. Yeah, well, no is the is yeah. the is the answer. I, I have in no clue. I'm that, just asking. Well, I mean, the toxins in grass. I think anyway. I don't have any serious knowledge, but I think you'd have to eat a lot of grass <laughs> for the. I think <laughs> well, I think cows do though, don't they? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, me and you. So yeah. we don't have the enzymes to break it down, and if we just ate it, it probably wouldn't poison us, but it probably would make us sick just from the eating the grass. Right? It wouldn't be any good for us, yeah. but. 
from a perspective of cows eating it, I mean, they've got, you know, loads of different stomachs. They ferment it. They do loads of stuff. And what they extract from it, the nutrients that goes into the meat is obviously a very different, that's, you know, it's, we're talking about primary pathways. So you eat that thing, it's in you. Whereas you eat the meat of something that's at that thing, that's a, that's a very different pathway. So it's not going to make it into you. And you are genetically designed to eat meat and you have the enzymes and the equipment to break that down. In fact, you need, you need the meat and you need the animal fats to thrive. And that's a controversial perspective in this day and age because a lot of people are you know, saying, well, this is unsustainable, the planet suffers from you know, uh, mass meat production, etc. And I, I'm not even going to argue with that because if you look at the American model of feeder lots, where they literally can go up in a helicopter and you can't see the end of it and it's just full of cattle in their own feces, then that can't be right for anybody. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to argue with that. But if you actually look at the proper science and research data that looks at sustainability of locally produced, grass-fed, organic beef, then it's carbon neutral and it doesn't contain any toxins. It's entirely natural and it's it's good for you like it will actually help you live longer fat animal fat protects your coronary arteries i mean again you're going to listen to me say this and i could be an advocate for it and you could question me and with my knowledge base that i've got i could i could we could play tennis with it back and yeah, forth of course you could yeah but i'm not as knowledgeable as the people that i'm going to give you as references so as I always say, look, this is my perspective on it. I am, I embody this as a philosophy. But if you want to find out more, yeah. then go and click on these things, look at them, do the research, have a think for yourself, and then decide for you how you want to live your life, basically. It's not for me to tell anyone. I'm just, just pointing fingers in directions to say, have you questioned this? Are you simply just, you know, accepting? I, lo I love listening to this because... It's such a it's such a uh, a one side of the view, and then you can make the argument for the other side. So, like the veganism and the the people who are vegans are passionate vegans, um, and then they'll come up with data and they'll come up with you know their side of the story. And it's just I just always find it really fascinating to to hear like you know which side and why and. And whatever, and I always find I'm I'm pretty much in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you know, what I mean, I'm I'm very much I, I love meat. I love meat. I, if I, I'd say seventy percent of my diet is is meat, you know. But I love fruit, and I do love veg. You know, it's not a, not a bad thing. And uh, but I understand what you're saying with the um, the inflammation. There's a lot of vegetables that I eat that I don't eat anymore because of inflammation. So, you know, so again, it's one of those things where I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, but then at the same time, I can watch something else and I can I can understand where they come from at times. Yeah, but that's science, isn't it? But I, yeah, I, I, I've never gone to, I guess, the extreme of a carnivore diet, but I used to certainly eat, eat very high protein, low carb, and always got very good results on that. Um, and I guess if anything, it was more like a paleo diet um, mm. to, to, to kind of coin it. But I know we had a GP on um, one of our earlier episodes. Um, we didn't get into talking about it next. because we didn't have time. But he was very, he's not a vegan as such, but he felt that all the research pointed in that direction. <laughs> yeah, so did. Yeah, I it almost that. depends where you look, doesn't it, as you yeah. say. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really doesn't. I mean, you know, I am Fox Mulder. I want to believe, you know, and so therefore, like you, I'm ambivalent until... I've digested the large body of research evidence out there. I mean, I was a vegetarian for 25 years. But if you ask me why I was a vegetarian, I'd say because I don't think it's right that we eat animals. Now, I'm a strict carnivore. Why, are you, why have you flipped and now you're a strict carnivore? Because now, you know, I have acknowledged the fact that it's what evolution has designed me to do. And... I tested the water by going, I'm going to do that and see what happens to me. And my health has just improved so dramatically. But also, again, my experience of working with, you know, our, our catchment group, the 40 to 60-year-old guys, is if you can get these points across and if you say, look, 
on this, just drink the Kool-Aid. Don't ever drink the Kool-Aid. But if you can drink the Kool-Aid on this and just give it a go, and then you come back to me in a month and tell me, you know, and I had a, a guy in just a little while ago who is um, he's a professional diver and um, he came in and, he, you know, he's, he's, he, he does a bit of BJJ and he, he looks after himself and that, but he's just going, I'm just, I'm not right. And I keep carrying this fat, but I eat really well and stuff. So we went through the protocol, the stuff, and he went away on board and he was saying, I don't know how it's going to work on board because they feed us and, you know, saturation diving it's not anyway he came back and he walked in and he just looked awesome anyway and i kind of looked at him and went thanks a lot of change for you and he went mate he said i just feel fantastic he said I totally adopted it he said it was real easy i just told the chef give me double meat no veg so i've just been living on that he said it was for like for everybody it was hard for the first week after that your fat adapted and after that your hunger's just disappears and you eat and blah 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 and he said look you know this is the best shape i've ever been in my life i my working underwater which is very physical and very demanding so my focus is better like my body's just working better it to the point where he went home and his missus went oh my god you look great i'm doing it (laughs) you know and i just thought brilliant okay it wasn't me that convinced him. I'm not here to convince anybody that I've got any answers. Mm-hmm. I, you know, if I have any answers, they're only the answers that work for me. Mm-hmm. But I am here to suggest to people that if you really want to find out the truth, that you need to not just take mainstream media information because you're being manipulated by a food industry, etc., other people's agendas about you. And you need to do your own research and look at it. Read the labels, look at, you know, some of these references and start to consider, you know, that there's, I mean, the story of the margarine is the best one, Mm, that it was literally about getting rid of this byproduct. So (laughs) let's just dye it yellow and sell it and pretend it's healthier than butter. (laughs) And now we know (laughs) it's going to kill you because it's vegetable oil that causes inflammation. And there's a direct link with Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease because of the inflammation. What should you be eating? Butter. And that's what your grandma and granddad ate and on and on. You know, so it's out there. It's just... You make your own decision, and I do totally take your point. I would never try to kind of, um, you know, you can't. You can take a horse to water, you can't make a drink. And so I lay out stuff. Go, you do what you need to do. So people are coming back. I just can't do it, mate. I love eating this. Da, da, da. You go, okay, fine, but do re- acknowledge that as you go later into your years, the repercussions of the decision you make now will quite likely be that you will have the common ailments that people have in our society mm-hmm. such as diabetes high blood pressure the rest of it um because of the choices that you make now 